Great day to all. Today we will discuss the psychology behind the story of John. Presented by Altarejos, Argualias, Buendia, Butuyan, Uwalde, Mabanag, Ong Eileen, Ong Natalie, and Cerneo. John is a sophomore currently taking up mathematics in De La Salle University. He has been granted a star scholarship by the university and this has deeply helped his financial situation since his family is not as well off. Aside from being exceptional in his academics and competitions, John is also dedicated to helping out the community by joining COSCA, the university's organization focused on volunteer work and helping people. However, despite all of this, John's relationship with his parents, specifically with his father, is somewhat weak. Since John would usually participate in inter-school math competitions, his father, who had a similar background to him, back then would demand first place positions every time for John to obtain the winning cash prizes. On the other hand, John's mother died when he was in third year high school as she suffered from leukemia. One day, when he was out with his friends celebrating his first place win in a math competition, John stumbled upon a donation box named Saved Anna in Mercury Drug, which was a drive aimed to help a girl named Anna who was suffering from leukemia but does not have the necessary resources to fight it. John then donated all his winnings to the drive and instead of telling his father the truth, John lied about the outcome of the competition. In understanding the self and the behavior of a person through psychology, we can look into two perspectives. First is the concept of self-identity, which refers to the way that an individual perceives themselves. This perspective includes concepts such as the existential self, wherein we distinguish ourselves apart from one another, the categorical self, where we identify as a member of a group or a category, and concepts such as esteem and the ideal person that we aspire to be. Second is human agency, wherein a person directly influences and contributes to their life circumstances. In this theory, there are four properties that dictates human agency. These are the intentionality of a person, forethought or the ability to visualize goals, self-reactiveness wherein we provide ourselves with a course of action, and self-reflectiveness or the ability to reflect on our thoughts and actions and make necessary adjustments. How did John behave? John behaved according to his experiences and virtues. First is his exceptional intelligence. John demonstrated intelligence in everything he does. He used this intelligence to score a scholarship for college. This helped him and his family become financially stable and support his education. Second are his favorite subjects. These are math, philosophy, psychology, and religion. These subjects made John a good individual. Math is what he used to train his brain. Philosophy is what he used to think deeper and understand things better. Psychology is used when he wants to realize himself and get to know himself better. And lastly, religion, which teaches him the values and virtues of a good Christian. Third are his personal traits. First is his responsible as a student. John works hard to become a scholar. Next is John likes being involved in voluntary work. He likes to help people and make their lives better. The fourth behavior is having a good relationship with his family. Although John's mom died at an early age, that didn't stop him from being close to his other family members except his father. His father was distant to him because he felt pressure coming from his father, which led him to deciding on the things that happened in the end. So John behaved according to his experiences and virtues. It is not sudden that he donated his money to Anna's funds because as a good Christian, we must help each other grow and become better people. John likes philosophy, psychology, and religion because he wants to learn how to be a good person. While being a good person usually comes with characteristics such as honesty and generosity, John was generous when he donated the remaining cash prize to Anna despite knowing that his dad will be disappointed. However, when he was asked if he won or not, he lied that he didn't win at all. 
John applied self-reflectiveness because, for him, it's not wrong to lie to his dad since it's a right choice to use the money to save a life instead of using it to help out his own family. He also believes that it's better to lie to his dad than telling the truth because his dad might become more disappointed if he knows that John didn't use the cash for his own family. John lied and did not do what his dad wanted him to do but he had good intentions for his actions, making his actions more justifiable. How can John achieve happiness? According to the University of New Hampshire Psychological and Counseling Services, there are numerous ways to increase or achieve happiness in a person's life. With this, it could be an approach for John to achieve happiness. First would be focus on problem solving rather than just venting. Since his father always put pressure to him to be the best, John could treat this pressure as his motivation to develop his skills. Second would be practice gratitude. With John's exceptional intelligence, he was able to study in a prestigious university. Thus, he must savor this moment as this is a huge blessing for him and his family as well. He could achieve relief and happiness if he focuses on his blessings rather than his own problems in life. Third would be engage in simple acts of kindness. John came from an underprivileged family. He knows the struggle of being financially unstable to assert their needs every day. However, gaining a blessing from God, he must know how to reciprocate those blessings. With this, the fulfillment of being able to help could make him happy. Fourth would be build intrinsic motivation. With a lot of pressure put into him, he could easily be uninspired because of the burden that he carries. However, he should find his own motivation to keep moving forward. His motivation should not solely be based on what other people want from him, but what he wants for himself and his own sake. John's behavior towards the situation shows that he is a very compassionate and generous person. Despite his and his family's own needs, he was able to go out of his way to help others in need. His close relationship with his mother and her sudden passing may have also influenced his overall personality, which made him more empathic towards other people who struggled the same illness as her. He could have donated only a portion of his cash prize, but instead gave his all. This could mean that he knew just how important his help was for Anna. In the end, John decided not to tell his father about his achievement and the donation he did. This could also mean that his heart is not ultimately after what his father thought of him, but more on how he was able to help others. Psychological self pertains to, first, self-identity, wherein one creates their ideal self or self-image and is able to distinguish themselves apart from other people, and two, human agency, wherein an individual contributes to their life circumstances. Using concepts from self-identity, John's generous and compassionate character was shown through him identifying himself as a member of a volunteer organization, COSTA, which is a group of students whose mission is to display charity, generosity, and kindness towards people. Using concepts from human agency, him being compassionate and generous can be seen through evaluating his intentions, which was a genuine desire to donate his cash price and help an ill person despite the consequences from his father, and his self-reflectiveness, which was him being able to reflect on why he chose to donate his money, which was because of his mother's passing with the same illness, and was able to make adjustments to handle his father's reaction. What do you consider as the weakness of your explanation? Mostly, all concepts under the psychological self of John were discussed in the story and the presentation, though there is but one weakness. The weakness in our explanation is that there is no information regarding John's aspirations in the future. In John's story, it is never stated what his goals, dreams, and aspirations were. As we are interpreting John's story based on the psychological self, the contents of the story fail to mention what influence John's ideal self holds in his final decision. Information about John's childhood, upbringing, and interests are vital to understand his behavior. In the story, it was disclosed that John is an excellent student and a responsible son. He was not born in a well-off family, but due to his perseverance and intelligence, 
he was able to become a star scholar in De La Salle University. He is smart and does well in school. He loves math and even joins competitions. He is also a volunteer in Costco. John may be a brilliant child, but his relationship with his father is unfavorable. He always pressures John to aim for the best, especially when he joins math competitions. Furthermore, John's mother died of leukemia when he was young, whom he was very close with. John's story tells us that ultimately, there are many factors in our lives that we cannot control, such as the passing of his mother, the treatment of his father towards him, and the like. This is the complexity of the concept of the self. We are largely influenced by our environment, the people around us, and perhaps purely by luck or chance. You can create an infinite number of equations that could lead to an infinite number of outcomes. Even the smallest of instances, discrepancies in time, or minuscule actions may greatly affect the result. But John's story reflects the simplicity of the self by John exemplifying that we still have control over our actions and thoughts as expressed by the self-agency theory. John did something that his friends didn't quite understand, and even the group as viewers were dumbfounded at the ending. But the choice to donate all of the prize money truly shows that no matter what the uncontrollable factors may bring upon us, we are always able, to some extent, create our own reality, happiness, or reaction towards the inevitable or the unexpected.